Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my office. I'm Coach Garrison, and welcome to First and Ten. And what we're going to do in First and Ten is we're actually going to take this clipboard and I'm going to be coaching the audience and coaching you as a player on my team, if you will, through practical life skills. In fact, um, we're going to run some tough plays. We're going to run some... Uh, interesting plays we're going to run some very tricky and complex plays so i do appreciate your patience and uh, i'm going to have some tools here uh, to utilize to help us through this and i'm always going to probably have some data here to make reference to so um and and of course my cell phone because you know if it rings i just might have to answer it but i do appreciate the opportunity to sit before you and uh, by all means, I hope you enjoy the show. Now, today in first and ten, another reason it's called first and ten. Well, in football, there is a measurement of ten yards you have to accomplish before you get a chance to run another series of plays. So, there's a ways that we a ways that we can check progress or the lack thereof. And sometimes we what we do well, we'll get the whole ten yards. You know, you capture it right away, but sometimes things have to be done in increments of five yards, three yards. So that gives room for all of our learning curves because I don't get it on the first time. So this is the perfect show to just kind of sit down and relax and you and I can, can talk about uh, skills, uh, training and development and our spiritual lives and our mental aspects. Whew. Is anything going on up there? I know you just can't wait to see what's twirling around and uh, the mental aspects of our lives. And of course, physically, you know, how we're taking care of our bodies or we're listening to our bodies and we get to do all of that in around about 15 minutes. And uh, so a time is uh, definitely a measurement uh, in our lives. And so we're going to use this uh, first quarter, if you will. So whatever sport you play, or if you watch a sport, if you don't do sports at all, first and ten, we you know we get incremental movements in what we're talking about. Today, I'm going to use as a platform through a, a site called ClearPointStrategy.com and Rachel Smith. So I'm always going to give credit to the uh, literature or the data that I'm using, uh, that type of thing. I'll let you know when I spit out some of my own. So we're going to go through. Um, the elements of being a good strategic leader, especially in this COVID-19 era, if you will, we're going to need our leaders and we're going to, other leaders are going to come out of this pack. So at, at this point, if you are quarantined or if you are in a, a situation where you basically stop learning today, you get a chance to catch a few elements of what it takes to be a good leader and to build your confidence in the leadership strategy that you have. So number one, strong communication. Without a doubt, being an effective communicator is a top attribute of being a strategic leader. Strong communication, being able to use reflective listening strategies, understanding the receiver and the sender are both responsible. Both of you are responsible for capturing the data that you're sending. And if I send it to you, and you don't get it, then I'm responsible for maybe repackaging it. If you're sending it to me and I don't get it, but the, the bottom line is that both of us need to get it in order to have a strategic plan. And we can't move. We might call a cadence. We might run a play. So strategic leadership starts with good, strong communication. All right. All right, got huddle up. Bring it on in. Pay attention. Stay focused. And uh, one of those elements of good um, leadership, the second one I'll mention, is good listening skills. We think we listen because we hear. We think we heard because we're listening. But through all of that, there, it's got to be some comprehension involved. We have to understand exactly what to do, even though we've heard it. So that effective communication has to be heard as mark twain said wisdom is the reward you get from a lifetime of listening when you would have rather talked 
So I'm just leave it at that point right there. Do I need to read what Mark said again? <laughs> Mark Twain said, wisdom is the reward you get for a lifetime of listening when you would have rather talked. Nice soft way of saying shut up sometimes. All right. All right. The third one, passion and commitment. I don't need to read what they wrote up here. Enthusiasm. What's your gift? What's your gain? If you're down in the press right now, you might want to lift somebody else up and it would ignite, ignite what you already have inside of you. You have to go to work. My leaders out there now and the ones that are up and coming, you have to invest. If this game is tough and hard and we're down by 20 points or whatever, if we're behind in our bills, if we're behind and can't get in to get to church and get our normal dose of scripture and motivation and all the music and all the praise and worship and all the going to work and the celebration and our routine is broken because we're used to going to work. Hours been cut. Jobs been cut. Your passion still, still, still I can't even talk right now, should still be there. Your passion and your commitment should not waver if it's something that's written in your heart. Okay? So don't let people talk you out of that. Well, I don't know if you should have been doing that anyway. Or yourself talk you out of it. Uh, I don't know if I really liked it that much anyways. I might as well look for something else to do. Oh, I want to go for a promotion when you are already where you want it to be. So passion and commitment, uh, those areas right there are very, very important. So all right, guys and gals, you ever been around this woe, woe is me person? Every time something new comes up, they counter it with some negativity. I don't know if I can do that. That's too difficult. I haven't seen that before. Scares the tar out of some of us when we have to learn something new. My point is positivity is so important in my life right now. I try not to stay down only for a few moments. If I catch myself wandering, staring at the wall or thinking about an issue too deep, then I'm going to go overboard with it. So positivity is something that you have to actually engineer and be able to use. It's not like when you wake up in the morning, you get a coffee, and you're feeling great, and then you're going to be positive. You're going to have to be positive even in bad times and positive even in good times, when it's raining, when it's snowing. When, wait a minute, snowing? Now, me and Jack Frost don't get along. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that. But I did find this past winter. So positivity has got to be in your tool bag, okay? Now, these things that you're learning that we're talking about during the first and 10 show, I have great expectations that you will be implementing these in your daily walk, okay? No, we're just not going to sit here and I'm not a preacher or anything like that. I can witness to you, but we're just not going to sit here and talk about stuff and you ain't going to walk with it and you ain't going to talk with it. So that's not what the coaching show is all about. That, that's, that's not what the way I define uh, motivation. I'm transferring energy to you. I'm transferring heart to you. You don't know how I feel right now. I might feel terrible, but I'm getting work done and I'm transferring it to you. And yes, sometimes I play in pain, okay? And, and you'll be required to play in pain as well at certain times because you know the end is going to come. So positivity can come sweet sounded or it can come just the way I delivered it to you in sort of a tough love way. It might have sounded nice, nasty to some uh, and maybe a little haughty, but believe me, if I'm asking it of you, then by all means, I'm willing to take it uh, from you. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead and hit number five, innovation. Become who you are. Play your game. Maybe that's why you haven't learned or that's why it's so difficult because you're always watching everybody else and trying to see how they do it a little bit too much. Play your game, and God has gifted you, and if you're just discovering your gift, I'm not going to laugh at you. Maybe you discovered it a long time ago, and you just didn't want to put forth and, and, and bring it and start using it with people. Now, that was your responsibility then, 
and I can't help you when I got a degree in engineering because your mama told you this is what you was going to do, but you really wanted a degree in, I don't know, mental health or something because you're a people person. But now you're accountable. Once you are aware, then now you're aware of your responsibilities. And I want you to be innovative and in reintroducing yourself, especially in the quarantine. Use what you got. We're so used to working with people, for people on the nine to five that now we got free time on our hands. But that free time is your time. Use that time to allow yourself a rebirth. So you got to get innovative with your family. You got to find things to do with your children. And I know a lot of the uh, parents are experts at that with children around the house eating three meals a day and saying they're bored and technology ain't cutting it all the way. So getting innovative. If you're 75 years old, get a smartphone. Yeah, get a smartphone to ask all the questions you want to ask and just keep the folks that are trying to teach you how to use that phone busy. So you're about to learn something. No escape from technology. You're already in the computers already. So just having a smartphone is not going to make it any worse. All right. Collaboration. All these things up to this point, you got to be able to share it with someone. You don't necessarily need to be a small soldier, an individual soldier, or an independent soldier. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do all me. This is, you know, this is just me. Well, no, absolutely not. You're, you're with a team. You're uh, in some way, shape, form, or fashion. There is a leader in your life somewhere, whether it's the government, whether it's at church, whether it's at school. There's somebody that's accountable for you. So you might as well understand you have to collaborate with others socially, even if it's just driving down the street. We're responsible for staying in our lanes, and we get a collaboration of folks that get things done going different places in the city for different purposes. Whatever you're doing, just share it. Just share it with particular people. They may like it. They may not. Some people you might not want to share it because some people know how to take the substance out of your idea through critical um, or constructive criticism. As soon as you mention that I'd like for you to help me, they're thinking about this is the real energy stealer. As soon as you mention something that you're thinking about doing, oh, we got two minutes and 30 seconds on the clock, but I got to watch it. As soon as you mention something about doing something new, they felt like they want to either, um, you know, I want to do that too. I wanted to do that. But collaboration is your ability to team up with someone else that's perhaps doing the same thing that you're doing or you're playing vital parts and vital roles. So I, I think we're covering some ground here. Um, and this is sort of a pilot program, so I want to see how much you can actually handle of my attitude. Um, and uh, let me put, let me kick out a hard one here. Diplomacy. Yes, you cannot speak your mind in every way that you want it to be spoken. So you're going to have to use some diplomacy at times. You cannot say everything you want in the, in, under any circumstances. You cannot do it, okay? So there has to be some diplomacy, and it needs to be dealt with through integrity and honesty in order for you to maintain your position as a leader. Now, you can segue your way into a situation by using methods of persuasion, and you might win one or two games that way. But if you want to maintain and build a championship team, you want to definitely have a diplomatic way of implementing sound ideas with a great spirit behind it. Well, I want to say my time is about up for this uh, first and 10 show. Um, we got through uh, several elements of uh, strategic leadership. Thank you for joining first and 10. I'm Coach Garrison. Look forward to um, perhaps a few more sessions on uh, this playing field. And uh, by all means, what I've shared with you today, if you've heard one or two sentences, then please implement it today. Lift somebody's spirit or go into the communication aspect. Make sure they understand, you understand, and then sort of replay it back. And then get up to the line, whatever your starting line is, with intents and intensity and passion. So I want you to live strong today. And whatever capacity you are, if you're a leader, 
and you're going to be a leader, an inspiring leader, I want you to play hard. Look forward to seeing you next time.